Hello friends, this video on adolescence part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. But the question is, what causes these secondary sexual characters during puberty? Why these kind of changes start taking place? Like why appearance of hair, menstrual cycle, breast enlargement? I mean, how all these changes happen? What magic happens inside the body that all these changes start taking place as soon as the person enters into his or her adolescence? So hormones are responsible for secondary sexual characters in males and females. So now we have to understand what exactly hormones are. So hormones are nothing but substances which are released by the endocrine glands. We spoke about endocrine and exocrine glands, right? So endocrine glands were those glands which do not have ducts. So they directly secrete their substances into the bloodstream. So one of those substances are the hormones. So endocrine glands release hormones and these hormones are chemical substances. These substances can bring about a lot of changes in the body of a person. And there are many different types of hormones which are released by different types of endocrine glands. So now the question is, what is hormones? I mean, we want to know more about hormones because this one sentence is not enough. So let us spend some time understanding hormones. So hormones are mostly secreted by endocrine glands, as I said just now. So these hormones are carried by blood because that is the property of endocrine glands. They do not have ducts. So there are no ducts, that is no tube-like structure. So their secretion will directly come into the bloodstream and then blood will carry it to different parts of the body. They are chemical messengers. Why are they called chemical messengers? Because uh, hormones are nothing but chemical substances. So they are chemical messengers because they send information from one part of the body to another because when once they are left into the blood then blood carries them from one part to another part so it basically sends information from one part to another so they are called messenger and since they are chemical substances so they are chemical so that is why hormones are chemical messengers they act on specific target organ so it hormones are released by endocrine glands then they are left into the blood then blood will carry it to a particular target organ so there has to be a specific part where it has to be carried it is something like this let us suppose if you want to post a letter to your friend who lives somewhere else so what do you do you write a letter put it inside an envelope and then write your friend's postal address and then put it inside the post office box then then it gets delivered to that exact address so if you have mentioned a particular address say the address is of new delhi so the letter has to be posted to that particular address of new delhi it cannot be sent to bombay or pune or chennai right so similarly in case of hormones also they have to reach a specific target site so blood will carry it to that specific target site where it has to reach so hormones are very specific in their action so let us look at this picture so here this red lines they show the blood stream so let us suppose the hormones are released by endocrine glands so when the hormones are present in this blood stream so if this is the target organ let us say this is the target organ so every organ will be made up of cells so the hormone will reach this target cell so it reaches the specific target cell it doesn't go or and enter anywhere so it get destroyed after its job is done because its job is only to carry information from one part to another. So once it has conveyed its information to the target cell, the hormone will get destroyed because that was its only job. It doesn't bring about any other change. It just informs what needs to be done. And after that, it itself gets destroyed and the changes then start taking place as per the instruction which was conveyed by the hormone. Another important thing is it should always be present in the right amount. If it is present in more amount than required, then also it can cause several problems. Similarly, if it is present in less amount than what is desired, that can also cause several problems. So we will see that why it should be present in the right amount and what can happen if it is present in more or less amounts. So now that we have discussed about hormones, let us see what are the specific male and female hormones. 
Now, due to the presence of these hormones in male and female, these different traits start appearing during adolescence. So, hormones play a very important role in transition between the juvenile, reproductive and senescent phases. So, we have discussed about all these three phases, juvenile, reproductive and senescent. Now, as these phases changes in human life, there are many traits which also change. For example, when a person uh, transforms or a, when a person enters into reproductive phase from juvenile phase, there are so many different things which are observed in that person. For example, in case of males, appearance of beard and moustaches, uh, appearance of body hair, facial hair. Uh, then the growth of reproductive tissues. Similarly, in case of females, there, there are so many noticeable things like breast development, uh, menstruation and so many other things. So now how these changes happen? So behind all these changes is the hormone. So there are specific hormones which cause specific changes. Now in male and female, there are different hormones which are responsible for different changes. So testosterone is the hormone which is released in case of males. So testosterone is released from testis of males. So testis produces sperms also and it also produces testosterone. Similarly in case of females, these are the female hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So these are the female hormones. Estrogen, it is produced from the ovary. Again, ovary is the same organ which also produces ovum or egg. Now, this testosterone and estrogen. So, estro testosterone is called the male sex hormone. Why is it called sex hormone? Because it regulates the sex secondary sexual characteristics. Due to the presence of this hormone, they, all the secondary sexual characters like beard, moustaches, facial hair, hair under the armpit, uh, then the stimulation of penis. Similarly, in case of females, due to the present of, presence of estrogen, menstrual cycle begins. So that is why these are termed as the male and female sex hormones. Now, who secretes these hormones? As I said, testis secretes testosterone and ovary secretes estrogen. But there is another master gland which regulates the secretion of these hormones. So there is somebody else. So even the ovary and the testis, they also have a boss. So when they get order from boss, only then they secrete these hormones. So who is the boss? Boss is none other than the pituitary gland. So just now we were talking about the endocrine gland side. Right? So there we saw pituitary gland which was present in the brain. So pituitary gland is the master gland. So he is the boss of all other glands. So this master gland will send an instruction or it will give command to testis and ovary to secrete testosterone and estrogen respectively. So the control is with the pituitary gland. So when the right time approaches, that is when puberty starts or when adolescence starts, then pituitary gland sends signal to testis and ovary and asks them to secrete these hormones. Now, due to the secretion of testosterone and estrogen, all the secondary sexual characters appear in a person. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.